making some uh, ground beef this morning. Uh, this morning's breakfast is ground beef, uh, rice, two eggs, and some salt. <laughs> A little me and Ian get the morning started. Living room, kitchen, split plan, two guest bedrooms there and a master towards the back. Uh, we're building this for ourselves to live in. And then within two years, we'll probably rent this out too and move somewhere else. Gotta take advantage of those uh, primary interest rates and low down payment. So that's what we're doing. Guest bathroom, standard guest bedroom. There's nothing real fancy there. Walk-in closet. Oh, they got the glass shower in. Okay, they, they did do something. Cool, perfect. And there's water in it. Oh my God. Sending photos and calling. All right, let's get back on the car. It's so freaking hot in here. I can't take it. Hello? How can I help you, Lane? Good morning. Yeah, so um, the frameless shower is only half frameless. It's like they put the frameless glass in, and then they put the, or they put the frame glass in, and then the frameless glass door. Okay. Doesn't make sense. And, and what's up with the floor? What are you sending me for the floor? Someone left, or someone opened the master bedroom window, and it stormed like hell last night, and there's a bunch of water everywhere. Okay. Listen. <laughs> Bitch, I sleep. <laughs> I know you don't, but I sleep. <laughs> I will let you know, okay? Alrighty. Thank you, Amanda. You're welcome, Lane. Mm, bye. Bye. They all hate me. <laughs> <laughs> so, owning a Tesla, one of the big no-nos as far as keeping the car clean and washing it goes is you don't want to take it through a car wash because like you wouldn't take a Ferrari or you know like a, like a nice Corvette through a car wash but I am not known for uh, listening to the rules. Car wash mood. Thanks Elon. Oh look at this Honda behind us. He got threatened by our speed. Honda's mad that we went fast. The big truck's mad that we're in a Tesla, so now they're both speeding up. We're going 16 and 45, and they're both trying to catch up to me now. I had no idea you were filming. <laughs> there's a lot of Tesla walkthrough uh, videos out there, but there's none with me hosting it. So this is gonna be the best one. <laughs> this is a 2021 uh, Tesla Model Y. I've had it for a year as of June, uh, first, of, first of July. Um, it's at about 46, 45,000 miles on it already. I drive a little more than the average person. I do have the white interior, which also comes with the white doors. Uh, 2022 and some 21s don't have that. Um, they switch to Alcatara. It's a little messy. It's lived in. I'm not sprucing things up for you guys really. So you're kind of seeing it, what it usually looks like uh, on any given week, baby stuff, you know, car seat. It's not too hard to actually keep clean. Um, I'll put a video up at some point of uh, me trying to clean up the seats because um, the driver's seat seen all of the miles. I've cleaned it up here and there a little bit, but nothing crazy. You just take a baby wipe to it. But um, in the future, I'll do a video of how to clean the seats and kind of what I do as far as maintenance goes and uh, whatnot. But uh, I'm going to give you a little tour. All Teslas have a frunk. There's no engine in this puppy, so all the extra space can be used for storage. Typically, if my uh, wife's Filipino, so if we go to an Asian market and they get a bunch of fish and or dried fish and just, you know, oyster sauce and stuff that's all freshly made and whatnot, it's got a very pungent smell. Anything pungent in the frunk. I don't want that associated with a car at all. It all goes in there. Um, I've got 3D mats and all the uh, 
or in the, the, the whole car, the frunk, trunk, sub trunk, and then all the mats are the 3D mats. I do like them. Uh, it's going pretty good. Uh, no maintenance, no engine. I put windshield fluid in here a few times. That's about it. Um, the front of the car er, is softer than I thought it would be. Um, it is kind of prone to getting little nicks and scratches. There's no PPF on it whatsoever. I uh, got a quote for that, and I'm like, that's not going to happen. So <laughs> I wanted close to two grand to PPF the whole car, and I just I didn't like it. I, I found like a black bra to put on it, but that looked retarded, so I didn't do it either. I'll just clean it up and do some paint correction here and there if I need it. This is a five-seater option. I was tempted to go with a seven-seater option. Um, but the seven seaters, I mean, those two extra seats here, I can show you where they would actually go. So the seven seater option, the two seats would go right here and they sit about right here and it, like the headrest is about right here and it goes down. But I mean, you're only fitting like maybe like if you're six and younger, maybe in there, really small. I'm tall. My kids are going to be tall. It just didn't seem practical to me. In this trunk, which is a lot of space, these two buttons right here actually fold down the seats and it's got camp mode which i have used i uh, took a trip back from ohio by myself and i slept in it a night it was great perfect i mean i don't know if the camera does it justice but it's a pretty big sub trunk i mean you can fit tons of stuff inside there um what i usually do is I, i've got papers baby stuff files the water bottle or two and back here if i'm ever on some kind of meeting and they're, they're wanting to see the car or if I have to take someone a, a, anywhere, this is where everything goes. So this is the, let me look like I have my, you know, stuff together and my car's clean compartment. You open this up, throw it all in there, close it. Oh, it's a, it's a clean car. <laughs> That's the trunk. The cool thing about the inside is I have the white interior, uh, the white seats, but I have a wood dash. So this dash is actual wood, and so is this center console piece. This is all actual wood. It helps when you actually know Elon. Oh, there we go. Looks like he's calling me now. Uh, if you could go back 11 years today, just okay. I had made one car. How do people think about electric cars? So think about okay. Cars All right. Being slow and ugly and, All right, bye. and poor performance. So we want to have. Okay. So I can't talk about Elon. Um, this is actually from HillsMade.com. Um, they do a OEM kind of retrofit style. It's actually a cap and it goes on top. Um, but this is all actual wood. Like so, like, you could stain it or sand it and stain it if you want. They've got different. Uh, color options, not a sponsor. No one subscribed to the channel. I don't have sponsors <laughs> yet, but um, I came across this and I fell in love with it. Um, and it, it, it looks great. Like I, I wanted the wood dash and I wanted the white seats. But in the three and Y, that's not an option. You can't have the white seats with the wood only in the S and X. Is that an option? Which I was kind of pissed about. But this company launched it. I'm wanting to say it's out of Switzerland or Germany or something like that. It takes a little bit to ship, maybe a few weeks longer than it usually would for something, but it's great. I love it. I uh, had no um, issues with it. Um, first one I got had a little warp in it. Told them about it. They sent me a new one for free, uh, which was great. Love that. Uh, customer service is uh, excellent, um, at least in my experience it, it is. And. Um, yeah, that has been the tour of the Tesla Model Y uh, 2021. Um, in the 2021, this is, is whenever they started it, they stopped the uh, passenger seat lumbar support. This one actually does have it. Um, so uh, I'll take that win. Um, the passenger does have lumbar support, which is cool, you know, for now these cars are going for like 70 plus thousand dollars which is just crazy uh, i think you should have passenger lumbar support <laughs> i think that's, that should just come stock but apparently them you know they saw that no one was using it so they just took it out to save on components and stuff like that but um a drawback to this car is it doesn't have bioweapon defense mode i took this delivery in 2021 
and um, it, I wasn't supposed to get it for like an extra, or I, I took it late June, I think it was like June 28th or like July 1st or something like that. I wasn't supposed to get it till about early August, so it came early and I got the call to come pick it up early. They, they said, hey, we had one pop up that was, you know, uh, available 2021, do you, do you want it? And I'm like, yes, you know, where do I sign kind of thing. But um, what they didn't tell me was that this one doesn't have bioweapon defense mode. And they just started putting it standard in all the Tesla Model Ys two weeks after I took delivery of mine. So yes, I have lumbar support. No, I have, I don't have bioweapon defense mode. What is bioweapon defense? It's this giant HEPA filter in the in the front frunk kind of thing. Uh, it can't be put in the three because it's just too small. But the Y, there's enough room. These filters are massive. There's a video um, on YouTube where they put a, like a BMW and a Tesla Model Y in this giant um, like plastic bubble thing, and they pump it with this red gas. Or there's, yeah, this uh, red fog gas. And uh, once the bioweapon defense mode's on, they actually have a passenger in there filming. He's totally fine. And sh it shoots over to the BMW and it's the whole thing just covered in just like pink dust. It's really, really good. Um, but yeah, I don't have it. <laughs> so, thanks, Tesla. Um, that is a pro and con about them. It's like when they see the opportunity or chance to fix or update something or refresh it and make it better they immediately take action they don't wait to do it in year increments which is cool because more more people can get it than otherwise wouldn't but you also don't know what you're getting say when you pick up a car or you buy one used because that year kind of means nothing as far as the features you're going to get it's a good reference point but you have to actually look and see what's in the car because they make those changes all the time. So really kind of gotta be thorough to figure out what it's supposed to come with and what yours has and stuff like that. Um, they have talked about doing a retrofit since it does fit in the Model Y, but I mean, uh, there is no date on that. So if it ever comes out, I'll get it. If Cybertruck comes out around the same time or before that, I'm gonna trade this in for the Cybertruck. So that's kind of my own logic behind it. but. It's fine, I mean, you know, I'll get the occasional whiff of fumes and I'm just like, hmm, that's, thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that's been the tour of the Model Y uh, in a nutshell. So hope you guys like it. Hope you guys go out there and buy one. Uh, they're extremely cost effective in my opinion and I love this car. So one of my biggest gripes in this past several months is they took away my boombox horn. I mean, what's up with that? Like, I used to be able to honk the horn and it play custom sounds. Yeah, you can do that only when you're parked. So if you're at a light and you have to honk at someone, it doesn't play the sound anymore. Like, it's it's ridiculous. That was the horn sound, but you can only do it when you're parked. It's like, it doesn't make sense to me. That was a huge uh, step backwards, in my opinion. That was really cool. All the videos that came out of that, joking around. I mean, th th that's just, you know... It's fun, like maybe if they're concerned about safety, don't allow you to change it while you're driving. You have to be in park in, in, in order to change, you know, these uh, sounds. Um, but I think that's why they did it was a safety feature. They saw that everyone was messing with it while they were driving. What they should do is make it to where you can't change your sound until you're in park, but you can still have that same horn sound. That would make the most sense to me. I'm still kind of pissed about that, but. Hopefully they fix that in an update. So, like I've established, I love this car. Um, had it for a little over a year now, about a year and a couple months. Put about 46,000 miles roughly on it. Love it. Um, however, I mean, uh, Elon, if you're listening, or I know you're listening, so uh, <laughs> I've got a few kind of thoughts. Um, and I've kind of been looking online, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. Um, I think full self-driving should travel with your account, not per car, you know, per car basis. I mean, like maybe it makes sense for them to do that if they're selling their used vehicles. They can just turn autopilot on, and it's instantly worth more. It's like I kind of get that aspect of it, but on the consumer end, it sucks. 
as um, full self driving was going up, uh, first or second week of September, I read so the 15 grand, and that's insane. So it's like, sure you get that, you know, you tie it into the financing of your vehicle, whatever. And you've got full self driving. The second the new car or they release a new version or the Cybertruck comes out and you trade your car in, your full self driving is gone. Like it's literally worthless. Like it might give you a little bit increased value for it, but it's not a whole lot. Now you've got to buy it again versus if you buy it once, it travels to your account. I mean, like I'm not saying like your account should apply to all of your vehicles if you have more, well, you know, multiple Teslas, but it should travel with your person or your account or your login or whatever. So Lane, Lane has it. Lane White has full self-driving. If I trade this in for a cyber truck, I just, you know, uh, sign in through, through the app, add the vehicle, boom, I've got full self-driving. It shouldn't be, okay, you trade your car in, now you don't have it, now you have to buy it again. It just seems stupid to me. I think a lot of people feel the same way. Um, so that's one thing I really wish they would change um, for sure. Um, so hopefully that kind of gets corrected in the future. I did see some news article about them doing something along those lines in Europe or China. I think it was Europe um, to where they're giving you half credit. So if you have full self-driving, they'll give you like a $6,000 credit towards your next car. I think that's a step in the right direction. I don't think that's, you know, what it should be, but it is going in the right direction. At least you get something back. But I mean, as of right now, it's 14 grand. So it's, I mean, I think you get a credit of $6,000. I don't even think it's quite half. I could be wrong, but you get a partial credit and it's like, okay, well, I'm getting 50% of what I paid for back. It doesn't really make sense to me. So it's like, I don't have full self-driving for that reason. Um, I thought about getting enhanced autopilot because I really want to be able to summon my car. It's like, who doesn't want to be able to do that? But at the same time, if Cybertruck comes out, if I, you know, hope it does, I'm trading this in for it. So it's like, what's the point of me buying it? If it's supposedly going to come out next year, I'll just piss away six grand for enhanced auto or now 15 grand for full self-driving. It just doesn't make sense doesn't make fiscal sense to do so I'm just kind of stuck here without full self-driving I want it but why buy it if I'm gonna get the cyber truck in a year it's just wasting money so I'm just over here having to manually change lanes myself and I can't summon my car but my friend has a model uh, 3 uh, Kurt uh, mr. Dark Lord Snyder himself um, he he has a uh, standard range model three, which whenever he bought it, enhanced autopilot was still out. They just re-released it within the past like month or so, um, but it was out still whenever he bought his. This is a 2019, still has the uh, chrome trim instead of it being all blacked out now. Um, but he has it on his. He was able to get or tie it into his financing, and he can now summon his car. You know that's cool. If you can tie it into financing that's a lot easier but they didn't have it whenever I bought mine and they you know uh, made it available for purchase again after the fact so but that's kind of my two cents on it I think some people feel the same way when you're spending this much money for a car and you're spending that much money on top of it for software you would think you would at least travel with your person like you bought the software like a Microsoft license you know Oop, that was a uh, Tesla <laughs> Uh, it should definitely travel with the person. I don't see, I don't know, it, it just feels like we're getting crapped on as a consumer in that sense for the software part. I don't really like that, but love the car. It's great. Wouldn't want to drive anything else. Um, I've gotten into multiple close calls, switching back from this vehicle to the wife's Subaru back and forth. It, it takes a little bit of getting used to because it doesn't have the regen braking. It doesn't, I mean, it's got autopilot on it, but it, it's bad. I think it's called uh, Starlink, Subaru Starlink. It's kind of funny how that worked out, but I don't know if they can really call it that, but maybe t Tesla doesn't have a copyright on the name or something. I, I don't know. Or a, it's not a copyright, a trademark. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what the future holds. I'm really looking forward to that Cybertruck, but um, that was kind of like the tour recap of a Tesla Model Y. If you guys got any questions or concerns, feel free to drop a comment, and I'll try to answer it as best as I can. 
Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Definitely help me out. This is a brand new channel, so every little bit helps. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Signing off. <laughs> Signing off again. <laughs>